was a windy day in Baltimore and we wanted to see Loch Hine, but rather than sailing there, we decided to walk instead. come to Loch Hine which is one of the anchorages that you can go to in and around Baltimore and we've come at low tide um, or very close to low tide just to see how much space you actually have. Now there's two anchorages uh, near Loch Hine. This is the one um, that's just at the bottom of the entrance to Loch Hine um, and um, you can see behind me a catch and that roughly is um, the furthest you can come down for the anchorage. There's certainly not a lot of room coming in but there is another an uh, anchorage just over there that you can just see over the bar um, but you need to be here at high water and going into the uh, lake by dinghy you need to be here at high water really. Um, recommend about an hour and a half before high water to go in, go around the lake and then come out about an hour and a half after. Um, apparently there is bioluminescence here um, and other good things like that but uh, for me and Bev I'm glad we walked even though it was a heck of a walk. One thing um, people say is that a change is good as a rest and um, I really really understand that because uh, Beverly and I are still in Baltimore Harbour after quite a while now. Mm. It's purely because there just seems to be have been a wave of tropical storm following tropical storm there's only had a pile of hurricanes and tropical storms in the Caribbean. They've all run up the American East Coast and then shot across the Atlantic and they're not arriving here. And although they have um, the main thrust of the storm has been uh, north of us, um, there's still been a lot of uh, winds in this area and um, Baltimore is protected from a heck of a lot of directions, isn't it, Beverly? It is. But rather than sitting where we were at anchor over there, um, we went into the pontoon to get water and um, we did all that. So it was a particularly eventful arrival because the winds were so strong it made the boat very difficult to control and we had the local dinghy club. I don't really think it is the dinghy club actually. I suspect it's something like a summer school. You mm. know, you keep the kids busy when they're off school in the summer. Because um, there's an awful lot of them, I've got a clue what they're doing. But, um... Which doesn't make it easy to navigate through them. <laughs> I gave Beverly that job because I am absolutely hateful of close quarter work, as I call it. Yeah, so anyway, we're, we're on the opposite side of the bay. And We've it just feels different. It is different. There's no town here. There's nothing here. Mm, there's, there's, an old, there's an old ruin abbey behind me and an old ruin, what might be military building or fort over that way. Um, that's it. Look up the boats. Mm. But it just feels different. Obviously we've still got the wind but uh, we came onto this sand side because the wind is coming from Shirkin Island. And we're about 100 metres from Shirkin Island so we've got no sea state here. Exactly and um, one thing that you do need to make sure when you're at anchor is that you minimise your sea state. Mm. Winds, as long as you've got a good anchor down, your anchor can ha handle it. Mm -hmm. But sea state is the thing that really bugs you on an sea anchor. Sea state is what will keep you awake at night. Definitely. Absolutely. And just because of our unfortunate arrival at the pontoon, dodging dinghies and things like that, um, we wound up stern sticking out and the the waves were coming under the boat and snapping and it's horrible. Absolutely horrible. So yeah. we were so glad to get out. It was like, oh. And that's one of the other reasons. like a tide and go to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why the other reason that Beverly and I feel so good. We're at anchor. Yeah. Oh, honest to goodness, we really do feel that anchor is the place that Salty Last would be. Yeah, and I can see the uh, the, the, ding the dinghies are out over there, but I'm sure a few of them will come over here to, to visit. But yeah. I think the Balkan will stay near the harbour, so. Mm. 
But um, the other thing I wanted to just chat about was, um, um, you know, it's just, I've forgotten now. Never mind. Yeah, we'll the other thing you want to talk about is how, how cruising affects your memory. <laughs> That's nothing to do with cruising. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. That's to do with the fact that I'm a spitty woman. Absolutely. Scary blonde. Yeah. Uh. I've just remembered what I wanted to talk about. And that is the hope for the future. Um, there's a still another tropical storm coming through. But um, I can actually see that after that tropical storm, it doesn't seem like there's anything else to come. The West Atlantic looks fairly clear. Yeah, and um, it's just amazing that you've got to look so far ahead and so far away from you to see what you're going to get. And uh, like I say, um, the West Atlantic is now going to come clear in a couple of days' time. So um, hopefully we'll be able to uh, say goodbye and, and try and explore some more because although I have really enjoyed coming to Baltimore, um, Time to we, move on. Yeah, and that's why we really liked moving uh, mm. because I think when you're in cruising mode, you get itchy feet. Mm. My sister used to get itchy feet. She used to live somewhere and then she wanted to move on. <laughs> I'm like that when I'm in cruising mode. Mm -hmm. Stay a week and I've had enough. <laughs> I want to go somewhere different. <laughs> I agree. It's time to go. It's time to go. Another Atlantic weather system has come in. We've been stuck here in Baltimore for the best part of two weeks now with weather. Um, the weather has been nice for a lot of it, but we just had the winds blowing directly in our face. Uh, no matter which entrance we'd gone out, we'd, we'd have been just having to motor go head to wind. But um, we're hoping that next week the wind is going to shift round a bit more to the north. At the minute we're in behind this cliff that's uh, over here. It's not very high, it's only about 10 metres high, but it's enough to break the wind. There's no sea state in this area because we're so close into it. And um, the other day when it was blowing an absolute hooli, we had white caps up in the bay where we used to be and it was nice and calm just here where we've come. So we're hoping to sit this out. Um, it's a big blow, a big, big purpley coloured swirly things out the Atlantic coming this way. The forecast says four to six, occasionally seven. So it'll happen this evening and overnight we're just hoping for a, a calm time but uh, at the minute it's not too bad and we're grateful for that calm morning this morning. It was ever so gusty last night but the weather's starting to turn but just as the weather from uh, the south has sort of like finally gone away <laughs> we've now got a weather system coming from the north which uh, looks pretty awful but never mind no more than I expected. <laughs> Worst place we... to stop us going round Ireland. Yeah, Beverly says it's the world trying to stop us, trying to make this achievement. <laughs> but finally, we feel as if we can escape from Baltimore. Hey. It has been a lovely place uh, to anchor, but um, it's time to go. It's time to go. We need to go. We definitely do.
seen another pot to keep Beverly uh, happy. Yeah, where? Um, again, to starboard of us. Okay. Uh, but I just like leading lines because theoretically they're clear of all hazards. Yeah, I see the pot. You of, of, which, of which there are plenty of pots, but I'm gonna, it means that because of this pot, I'm going to have to go um, to port. That's it. Westward of it, westward of the leading line, because, yes, you've guessed it. They've dropped, dropped a pot on the, on the leading, leading line. line. Ah. What a bunch of. This morning there wasn't a breath of wind. And so calm. It was and, now we've got, and now we've got four seven. Um, so, uh, and that's only within the hour. Yeah. Because um, we didn't leave Baltimore that long ago. No. So we're getting the Atlantic swell kicking up and things. So what we're trying to do now is get up that way and get in behind an island, cut some of the swell and wind, and then go along a bit and then turn and run for skull as best we can. But it just shows you just how good an anchorage uh, Baltimore is. It also just shows you how dangerous this coastline is. Yeah, because, you know, in some ways you, we just weren't aware of just how right. horrible it was outside. Yeah. 